Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we are going to do something a bit, a bit of a different video. Um, smallmouth season is more or less completely closed. Um, it's November 2nd now. Most lakes in the province where I'm in Nova Scotia closed on October 31st. Um, so still a few lakes open, but not very many. And you know, the weather changes and all that kind of thing. But what I thought we would do today is um, sort of have a look back on my season and uh, this season was one where I caught the most, the, the biggest, the, the most amount of big smallmouth bass um, I've caught, <clears throat> I've ever caught in my life. Um, and in particular, I caught the most 20 inch plus smallmouth bass that I've ever caught in a single season as well. So I thought we would go through um, my 10 biggest fish, what lures I caught them on, what were the conditions, um, that type of thing. And uh, yeah, and, and I don't know if that's, It'll be fun for you folks to watch, but it's, it'll be good for me just to reflect on that and, and to sort of look back on how I caught some big fish. Um, I'm someone that keeps pretty detailed notes of uh, of my fishing being, you know, the lake, the water temp, the day of the month, um, the different spots that I was fishing, what I caught them on, all that type of stuff, weather conditions. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about some of that stuff as we go along. But uh, yeah, here we go. All right, so the first big fish in the 20 inch range that I caught this year um, came on May 21st. And it actually happened to also be a new PB for me. So previous to this year, my PB was 20, 20 and three quarter inches. And so this fish measured 21 inches, um, which I will insert here. And so I caught that fish on a Mega Bass mag draft, six inch. This is the, I believe it's called albino pearl color. Um, for me with a mag draft, I'm always getting, I'm always purchasing something in white or pearl or something like that. Um, I just feel that that's a, I think it's just kind of like a good standard color to have. But in the water that I fish, this works well in both stained water, but also I feel in clear water um, where people often say, oh, in clear water, you should have more natural color, blah, blah, blah. I feel that this has a lot more, it has more drawing power in this color in clear water because I think fish can see it from a further distance away and, and come into it. That's just my opinion. I'm obviously not an angling expert by any stretch of the imagination, but, but that's what I think. So... I caught my first 21 incher on this thing, um, May 21st. It was mostly sunny day. Water temperature was around 63 degrees, and I caught it. I caught that fish um, up really shallow in about three feet of water, four feet of water. I want to say um, under a just over near a log. There was a log kind of sticking out of the water, and uh, I threw up in there, and sure enough, she hit. So first fish on the mag draft. All right, on to fish number two. Fish number two just came a few days after fish number one. Um, so May 25th, we're talking about now. And again, it was a mostly sunny day, slight breeze, water temp was at 65 at this time. Um, and I caught this particular fish, which was a 19 and a half inch fish. Um, caught this fish uh, also shallow off of rock on a sort of a a submerged point, I'll say, uh, coming out from the shoreline. A bit of a hump, but submerged. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just sort of fan casting around. It's typically a spot I fish fish fairly often um, and have in the past um, got a lot of big fish off of it. And again, surprise, surprise, on the Mega Bass, the six inch Mega Bass Mag Draft Albino Pearl was the color for that one as well. Um, and again, I'm just, I'm just, so the one thing with the mag draft that you should know is that if you fish this too fast, it'll blow out. It'll, it'll just go roll over on its side and that type of thing. So you got to really, how I fish this is I really just slowly, slow roll this thing, crawl, crawl it along and just let that tail back there slowly thump away. Um, and then just get ready for a massive strike. Um, so yeah, lots of fun, but on to fish. Number three. Okay, so fish number three, a little bit of different conditions. Um, it was 
July 1st. So we've moved from end of May now. June, I didn't catch any any of my top 10 fish were not caught in June. Um, so now we're moving into July. So we're really kind of getting into, we're out of spring. We're getting into the summer. Um, so much different conditions. This was caught on July 1st. It was overcast, very muggy and calm day. Um, water temp was in between 69 and 70 degrees. Um, and I was fishing a big flat anywhere. It went a flat that big, like a big, a big area of a flat that was, would go from about six feet or sorry, from four feet to about six feet. Um, and just sort of fan casting around. And, and obviously when I'm fishing a flat, I want something that covers water. Um, and that brings in the Tekel kick knocker. Um, so this is my first, my first year fishing with the Tekel kick knocker. Uh, it's a really good bait. I like it. It has, you know, it's got, it's got the three trebles, which, um, I'm, I'm still not sure yet if I'm a fan of, um, I'll talk about another top water bait that I really do like that only has two trebles, but nonetheless, um, Tekel kick knocker, great bait has a really, really great sound. So I was just fan casting this guy around. Um, it was, as I said, it was muggy, overcast and calm. So perfect conditions for the tech knocker, in my opinion, that's in bone color. Um, most of my top water walking baits will be in bone color. I don't really see a reason to have a different color. Maybe black would be, would be a good one as well. Um, but yeah, got a 20 point, 20 and three quarter incher on that one. Um, blasted it out of the water. It was a great bite, great fish. And I'll insert that picture here. All right, so now we're going on to fish number four and five. We'll do together because I caught them on the same day. Um, and we went, so now we're going, we went from end of May down to July. And now we're skipping all the way to the end of August. So this was August 31st. Um, water temp was 70 to 72 degrees. It was calm in, calm in the morning, got breezier in the afternoon. Um, I was fishing, the, I was fishing flats again, same, same flats, um, in that four to six feet of water. And I got two monster fish on that day in that area. One on a one knocker spook. So if you can see this thing has received a lot of damage in the day that I've been using it. Um, just I've been using one knocker spook for such a long time. Um, I have a lot of confidence in this bait and when I was comparing it earlier to the Tekel kick knocker here, um, as I said, Tekel kick knocker, three trebles, the spook, well, this one now only has one on it, but usually two. So I just took this one off the other day. I lost a tine off of that and also to retie or to put a new hook on, but also then to tie that new hook with a new feathered treble. Um, so that's why there's not a treble on here at the moment, but what I like about the one knocker spook as opposed opposed to the Tekel kick knocker is that with having only two trebles, I find I find I found with the Tekel kick knocker that even if I'm fishing braid to mono, um, the line still does seems to get wrapped around that front that front treble on here um, fairly often, um, and so just kind of found that annoying to and then you know you've wasted a cast if you're bombing it out there. This, on this one, the front treble is, I feel, set a bit further back than on the Tekel Kick Knocker. And so you don't really have, there's, you get way less line getting caught in your treble hook. Um, walking wise, I feel they're a little bit, they're a little bit different. Um, this one, the, the, the one knocker spook, I feel just, just walks seamlessly, effortlessly, just a great walking bait, stays on top of the water the whole time. Great knock, great, great knock to it too. So, and much different than this one, a little bit different than this one. So the Tekel kick knocker has a bit of a, bit of a higher pitch knock and the, and the one knocker spook, um, bit of a deeper, deeper one knock. Um, all right. So anyway, went on a bit of a tangent there, but yeah, cut a 20 inch and a 20, 22, 20.25, um, that day. And one of them, I can't remember which one. I'll insert a picture here, which will hopefully show if it, if which, which of those fish was on the one knocker spook, but one of those fish 
came on the one knocker spook one of my favorite top water baits all right so second big fish of that day probably no surprise <laughs> came on the mega bass mag draft the six inch Um, again, just sort of like a one-two punch, had the one knocker going. When that bite would slow down, I'd throw the Mega Bass Mag Draft here. Um, so they're similar, you know, similar, similar colors, that whole deal too. Um, and I would just slow roll this fan casting it around the flat. Um, and obviously got smoked. I love this. So this lure, as I said, is, is quickly becoming my favorite lure. This is really the first year as well. I fished it a little bit last year, but only in fall, I believe. Um, so this is the first year where I spent sort of the full season fishing this lure. Um, and it's a great, great lure. So some people I, I, I might know, they, they might only use the mag draft in spring or might only use it in fall, essentially for cold water, um, cold water applications. I'm using it all year long. Um, so, and it, and it works and it picks up fish. It works. You get big bites. Um, one of the knocks that I will say about about this, about the mag draft is, I mean, this, for this one in particular here, this one has actually stayed, but so you got the magnet that's inside the little, little cavity there. Um, in most mag drafts that I've had that magnet, you know, goes flying out the first or second fish that you catch and it's gone. Um, which isn't a, which isn't a big, a big deal necessarily. Um, you know, you just stick this stick, stick part of your, a tine from your, Triple hook in there anyway, but um, yeah, just one of those things. Not maybe not maybe the best as far as engineering goes when you know when that magnet comes flying out right away. But but it doesn't really matter to me anyways. It doesn't affect the action of the bait or anything like that. But just something I thought I would I would share because um, those baits aren't necessarily very cheap either. But there you go. The next big fish I caught um, in the twenty inch range actually came in a tournament. So this is the biggest fish I've caught um, in a live tournament. I've fished a lot of online tournaments where I've caught 20 inches before, but this is the first sort of live in-person tournament where I've where I've caught one over 20 inches. Um, and, and so this one came in late September, September 21st. Um, and it was an overcast day with slight breeze, water temp was 68. Um, you know, I was fishing, it was a very, it was a, so we were fishing sort of a chain of lakes. So you could, I think there was three or four different lakes that you could, they were all connected obviously through river systems and such that you could, that you could sort of choose which one you wanted to fish. Um, I believe the one that I was fishing was the smallest out of all of them. Um, and I kind of wanted to, I thought my thinking was I, there wouldn't be a lot of people there sort of get away from the crowds, that type of thing. Uh, it was a tough bite for most of the day for me. Um, I was you know, throwing all kinds of different lures, um, you know, catching fish, nothing big. Um, you know, I had, had a small, had a small limit. Wasn't, I, th I forget what, uh, maybe I was sitting in ninth place or something like that, um, at the time. And, uh, yeah. And for, for whatever reason I switched things up and, uh, I tied on the Z-Man Minimax Chatterbait. Um, this is a quarter ounce, I believe. And I paired that with the Jackal Drift Fry 4-incher. This is uh, the Wakasagi, um, not Wakasagi Spawn, that's in the 5-inch. This is the, the whatever the 4-inch Wakasagi color is called. It's Wakasagi something or others, Shine maybe or something. Um, and you'll see on this one, so throughout the day... Um, my chatterbait started with a skirt, but as the day went on, the skirt just got blown right off. And so by the end of it, I was still catching fish without the skirt. And it kind of actually um, made me realize without the skirt, it kind of gives a much more sort of streamlined, very much like it really gives that minnow profile um, a little bit, a little bit better probably than with the skirt on. Um, but, but nonetheless, so yeah, so I was just sort of um, parallel casting a weed edge um, just throwing, bombing it across this along, paralleling this weed edge and just reeling it back. And, uh, yeah, hooked into a 20.75, 20 point, 20 point, uh, 23 quarter incher, which I will post right here. 
Yeah, and so that fish actually was probably the most, well, not probably, it was the most important fish of my um, tournament season. Um, not only did that fish propel me into fourth place, for the, it was a two-day tournament, so it propelled me into fourth place, but it also propelled me into fourth place for Angler of the Year points, um, which is where I finished, because this was the final tournament of the season. So, so without that fish, I probably would have been down in the standings for both. I probably would have finished... Uh, I think leading going into the tournament, I was seventh in AOI points. Um, so I certainly wouldn't have f finished much better than seventh in AOI. But but that fish, this bait, got me into fourth. So so pretty important fish. So it's it's interesting how one fish can sort of change the course of your year a little bit as far as tournament fishing goes. So all right, so I think we're on to fish number seven now. Um, and so fish number six was caught August or sorry September twenty first. Fish number seven of my top 10 biggest fish of the season uh, was, caught, was caught September 28th. Um, and again, um, so it was looking at, so day was partly sunny, partly cloudy. Obviously, if it's partly sunny, it's partly cloudy. Gusty, uh, water temp was 63. Um, and again, fishing a flat with some deeper area. So it would be a flat that would go from uh, four to six and then drop off to like 13, 14, 15 feet kind of a thing. Um, so I was fishing on the shallower side of that flat, just again, fan casting around. And of course, wouldn't you know it, I got another monster 20 and three quarter incher on the six inch mega bass mag draft. That was just a fun fishing day. I ended up catching that day. I also caught a 19 inch and a 19.2, 19 and a quarter inch um, on the deeper side of that same flat, uh, just mid strolling the uh, jackal drift fry here. This is Wakasagi spawn. And this is on a, I believe a 3 16th ounce uh, Gamagatsu uh, horizon head. Um, so I just have that in here as sort of honorable mention because I caught those three nice fish um, all in the same day. But but um, yeah, just mid strolling that. I don't know if you can see the, probably can't see the difference in flash, but yeah, great little bait, but honorable mention to, uh, to the jackal drift fry on that day at least. All right, I believe we are on fish number eight, nine and 10 for the top 10 of my season. Um, these three fish, eight, nine, and 10, were all caught on the same day. Also caught another fish that day, which was also really big, but didn't make the cut for the top 10. Uh, it was a great day of fishing. Um, so now we go from September 28th, uh, where I caught the last big one, and now we go to October 5th. Um, so really spanning the, the whole, all the months of the fishing season here. Uh, it was an overcast day, it was very calm. Water temperature was 63 degrees. And I was typically fishing um, weeds or, or you know, um, pencil reeds or weeds, some pads, that type of thing. Um, but typically shallow water closer to the bank um, in little bay area and, and that little little cuts along the main, the main lake, that type of thing. Um, and then when that bite died, I also did do some deep cranking um, and caught a good one that way as well. And so actually that's what we'll start. So... So these three fish, so I caught a 19 and three quarter, um, which was caught deep cranking. This isn't the exact bait I was, I was fishing. That one got, got snagged on a, on a buoy rope. Um, but yeah, deep cranking in about 20 feet of water. Um, the bait I was using was more, uh, of a red, red crawdad crayfish type pattern, but nonetheless, just a deep crank getting down deep. Um, and it got destroyed. So the ninth fish of the day, the second second best of that day where I caught four great fish, um, came on a jackal pompadour. So the pompadour is a crawler style bait, as you can see by the wings there. And you just cast this thing out and it and it'll just slowly come in like this, making a ton of racket. So these wings. The metal on these wings makes a ton of racket, but then also it's got some got some great little BBs in there. Um, also has a prop in the back. Oh, and I just about hooked my finger there. 
Um, so this thing makes a ton of racket as it comes through the water, wobbling side to side like that. Um, and how I caught that fish was I saw a bunch of bait fish um, blowing up on the water. Obviously they were being chased um, and they were sort of, they, they were maybe like in one to two feet of water and they were kind of in, in behind a set of pencil reeds where there was a bit of open water. Um, so I just cast it in there, turned the reel crank about three or four times just to get this, just to get this, this pompadour, you know, going a little bit like that. Um, and this thing got rocked um, and it was that 25, 20.5 incher. Um, so yeah, so I caught that 20.5 on the pompadour. Honorable mention for that day also um, was my fourth biggest fish of the day. It was a 19 and a quarter incher also on the pompadour. Um, that fish came about, I don't know, maybe 50 yards from where I caught the 20.5 also in grass, just sort of casting it and then sort of navigating through the weeds so that I don't get it cut up. But typically I like to just to slow roll this thing, you know, and, uh, and it got smoked. Um, love this lure. Really only started fishing it, uh, maybe tried it a little bit last year, but really got into it this year. Um, and it will definitely become part of my regular rotation um, for the upcoming season in, uh, in 2025. All right, we're on to fish number 10, the 10th and final fish of my top 10 fish of the season. Um, so again, this was part of that epic day on October 5th where I caught the 19.25, um, the 19 and three quarter, the 20.5, and then last but certainly not least um, was another 21 incher. So I tied my PB. This one was actually, you know, if we're getting down to the, the minuscule measurements, this one was actually a little bit bigger than my PB, even though it still was under the 21 inch range. Um, nonetheless, tied my PB and of course, what else on the Mega Bass Mag Draft. Uh, such a great lure and, and this was again up super shallow in, in I think it was like three, three to four feet of water, just fishing some um, some dollar pads and, and sort of closer to shore. Um, whereas before in some of these other fish, big fish that I've caught, they were kind of more in open water on flats. So not necessarily close to shore, but on, on flats sort of out in the open water. Um, these on this day, everything came super close to shore, um, just right off the bank kind of a thing. But yeah, another tied my PB on the same fish I caught my original PB on or the same lure I caught my original PB on, the Mega Bass Mag Draft in the Albino Pearl, I believe it's called. Um, and you can see this this lure has been, I don't know if you can see all the markings on it, but it's definitely taken some damage. Um, great lure. Um, again, I'm going to make this more, I'll probably start throwing this a bit more next year as well. Um, so yeah, I had a fantastic season. Caught a lot of big fish, as I said, the most big fish I've caught um, in a single season ever. Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a different one, but uh, yeah, take it easy. Take care of each other, and uh, we'll see you next time.